right, we're watching the results out of Kentucky, but right now here are a few of the other races we're watching across News Nation. In Ohio, abortion rights are the number one issue on the ballot. The measure would protect abortion access. Another proposal would also legalize rec rec and regulate recreational marijuana for adult use. The polls close there in about an hour. Next, we're going to go to Virginia, where Republicans are vying for a trifecta of control over the governorship and both the state assembly chambers. They currently hold a narrow majority in the House and seek to flip the Senate. It will be the first Republican trifecta since 2013, giving Governor Glenn Youngkin the support he needs to push his agenda, including a 15-week abortion ban. Polls there close half an hour from now. Next, we turn to Mississippi, where voters are weighing whether to give a second term to Republican Governor Tate Reeves. Reeves is facing a pretty serious challenge from Brandon Presley, a pro-life Democrat and public service commissioner in the state. And if Presley's name sounds familiar, it's because he's second cousin to Elvis Presley. Mississippi has not elected a Democratic governor in more than 20 years. It would be a big deal if it happens tonight. Polls are set to close in about an hour and a half. And joining us now for more on all these key races is Scott Tranter, the director of data science at Decision Desk HQ. Scott, it's great to be have, have you here. Um, of course, the other big governor's race we've been following is in Kentucky, where polls closed just moments ago. You're digging into the early results. What are you seeing? Well, we're seeing a pretty strong start for the Democratic governor. Um, it looks like this is going to be a close race as we get more of this absentee voting in. They're still voting in about in, a, in the eastern half of the state. I'm sorry, the western half of the state. And so we're going to see some more votes roll in around 7 o'clock. And this one could be called late tonight. Very late. All right. Uh, Virginia's entire legislature is up for grabs, and Republicans are hoping to get full control of the state government for the first time in 10 years. This is a real test for Governor Youngkin. He's newly elected, widely seen as possible presidential candidate material. Yeah, he staked his political reputation on taking control of both the House of Delegates and the State Senate. He has funneled a lot of money. He spent a lot of time on the campaign trail. Um, it is early to tell. We haven't seen a whole lot of, of votes yet, but at least the early turnout looks like it's going to be close across the board. Um, this, the, the control of both houses pro may take a day or two to call. Um, but it could go either way. And so it'll be interesting to see if all this effort really um, bears something for the governor. It's worth noting that Virginia is the only southern state without a ban on abortion, and Governor Youngkin campaigned hard on a 15-week ban. Yeah, no, he campaigned really hard. He's fundraised a lot around it, and he was out giving speeches today in support of it and candidates supporting it. So it's going to be a real test, for, especially for some of those suburban swing districts. Yeah. Abortion rights uh, is also on the ballot in, in red state Ohio. We've seen four states pass measures protecting abortion rights since the Supreme Court overthrew Roe versus Wade. And voters in Wisconsin elected a member to the state Supreme Court who's pro-choice. Every state, even red states so far, have passed abortion rights measures. Now it's solidly red Ohio. Yeah, yeah, and I, it looks like we're going to see abortion rights win out in Ohio as well. This this measure had uh, a, a test a couple months ago, and it looked like it, it definitely passed then. It's interesting going into 2024. Ohio is a battleground state for the Senate. The Democrats nationally are looking for an issue in which they can wedge and potentially win in other states. Um, so we'll see what the final count is tonight. But it looks good for um, uh, uh, pro-choice people in in Ohio, and this might have implications going into 2024. Finally, uh, Mississippi, the governor's race there, is also one to watch. This is a deeply red state and a Democratic contender who is frankly making news just because he's a contender with a chance to win. Yeah, no, Mississippi should be an easy layup for Republican candidates. It's still, Tate Reeves is still favored to win, but it's probably going to be closer than it needs to be. Um, and, you know, we're going to look to see if that has any indications for what it might look like in 2024. But I think this one is just a case of a, of a, of a brand name candidate in Presley uh, making a run at a Republican governor here in Mississippi. All right. If you had to predict an upset, where would it be? If I had to predict an upset, I, I, I wouldn't call it an upset. Um, but it w I would say that the Republicans take uh, both both state House of Delegates and state Senate in Virginia. It looks like the Democrats are slightly favored, but, you know, Governor Youngkin's working pretty hard for it. Yeah. And polling in Virginia has been historically tough.
and he's popular there. So you never know what effect that Very will have. Popular. Very popular. All right, Scott Trent. Would be the first time he got an upset. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.